All right, what is going on everyone? Welcome back. This is part two of our big jetty slash beach running rod. Pretty sure it's gonna it's gonna have a, a dozen purposes by the time we're done with this. But here's what we have so far. We've got the three inch rear or butt, four inch rear, and then the two inch Eva foam shape using my drill, kind of used it like a lathe to kind of, I put the grips on there and then work down whatever shape I wanted with sandpaper. Got the uh, American Tackle reel seat in here. A 4,000 size Shimano Tranks is gonna go on this. I'm actually gonna get it mailed to me uh, to put on here to kind of try and match or just uh, pick some colors that are gonna go well with it. But um, since this is gonna be part two, what we're gonna do is, is we're actually gonna do the guide wraps on this part. Now, I said in the first video um, that we're gonna do something unique, something different. We're actually gonna acid wrap this rod. Now, acid wrap is where essentially we're gonna start on the top of the rod and then we're gonna spiral the rod eyes around it to be on the spine or the bottom side of the spine, the belly of the rod. Now, there's many ways you can acid wrap a rod. I've been doing a lot of research like this. Uh, I've been doing a lot of research about it. Um, everyone says something differently. Uh, a lot of people say you just need to kind of work um, what you think is gonna be best for you. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, is we're actually gonna measure this out. I'm gonna wrap the rod guides on there um, just with tape, just with rod building tape, and I'm gonna static load it. I think that's gonna be the best thing to do um, with this. Since it's my first one, when I think about it in my head, and I'm thinking about that line wrapping around, the only thing I wanna make sure of is when this rod is basically at its maximum load. As in like when you had this rod bent back on a big fish, I want the line to be on the belly of the rod, essentially like a spinning rod by the time or by the place um, in the guide, guide layout where the rod is at the maximum load. So I don't know really how well to explain it. I don't know how to explain this well, but basically whenever this rod is loaded down to max capacity on a fish, I wanna make sure that the rod is not loaded or bent in an area that the line is still wrapping around to get to the underside uh, underside guides. So I don't know how this, well this is gonna work out. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna wrap these guides. We're just gonna wrap these guides on this rod. Um, we're gonna do our acid wrap and then we're just gonna load it up until it looks right and until it feels good really. All right, so what we're gonna be using are these kind of bigger, more heavy duty Alps casting guides. Um, we're only gonna run eight of them. So, like I said, this is uncharted water for me. Um, another thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna reference kind of, this is the, I started with buying kind of materials off of CRV, bought a kit, they, they give this to you. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna look at, let's see if you can get the focus in there, but, we're actually gonna look at, it has some suggestions for your guide layout. We're actually probably gonna steal this guide light layout for the eight foot, but what we'll do and how we'll start it is we'll probably like round up to the nearest inch and add an inch between guide spacings as we go. And then um, when we get to the portion of the rod that's actually gonna be acid wrapped, um, we're actually gonna wrap it we're gonna to come to a complete 180 with only three guides. So this is gonna essentially be the top guide. This is gonna be probably at 90 degrees on the rod. And what, from what I understand is this will be like your bumper guide right here. Um, it'll be the guide that just keeps the line off the rod blank. And then this one will be almost at 180, but then the rest of these five right here They'll be at 180 and on the bottom side of the blank and essentially look like a spinning rod. All right, so what we did here is we have our layout kind of in our head and written down in front of us. Um, we're just gonna fast forward through this, but all I'm doing is, is getting some rod building tape and we're just temporarily putting these eyes down, but we're anchoring them down really well with the rod tape. So that way we can actually load this thing up, hook it up to a weight, and see what kind of load or bend we have on the rod with the current layout that we're putting on.
got some rod weights right here. Uh, a little expensive, but they work great for uh, testing the load of your rod here. We just got this rod weight set on 11. You can use them for other things, but I really don't know what to use them for other than testing rods. So let's see. So we have our, our line and everything. Oh, gonna break the tip off before I even finish this rod. Alright, so now this is what I do to load test a lot of these rods. It's 11 pounds. Let's put this on there. So two, what this will tell us is if I need to add more guides, need to space my guides differently, or whatnot. Alright, that actually <laughs> looks really good. Um, I don't know if you can see it. I'll follow the string down the line here. But see how it goes like this? First guide. Second guide. Third guide. And then fourth guide were underneath. Now the only thing I can think of right here after looking at this. Uh, the only thing I can think of is maybe bringing... No? I have to say maybe bringing the rod to me some. But bringing the front guy to me some, but I actually really like that. God, I don't know. I don't know if Kendall's gonna actually be able to handle a fish on this rod. I don't know. He's not gonna know how to use this rod. I'll probably end up keeping it for myself, if I'm being honest. But let's see if we can lift this weight up. Oh, that's why I don't use this reel. Let's see this. See, putting as much of a load on this rod as I can. See, can you see that? You gotta see all the baby toys and stuff in the back. Oh, we were lifting that 11 pound weight off the front with the rod. And it looks like we got good spacing, good spacing, and we're keeping the line off the blank. So we're gonna mark it. All right, so what we're fast forwarding through here is, is we're actually using a Dremel to grind down the guide feet so that way it allows a smooth transition for the guide thread to go from the blank onto the guide. Um, this is very important because you want your thread to be packed nice and tight. Uh, we don't pack it as nice and tight as we sh probably should have for this rod, but we did do another overwrap with the black and it's gonna look really good. You'll see coming up, but this is a very important process. Um, if you don't do this, Sometimes those guides can be too high of a ridge and your string or your wrapping thread will kind of stack up and it just doesn't look good. Now what we're doing is we're going to secure the front foot of this guide with some rod building tape and then we're going to start wrapping this guide with our gray, it's a cool gray under wrap. Um, we're going to start wrapping it starting at the rear foot and then we're going to work up the rod and do all eight of these eyes.
We have the guides on. Um, we just went with like a cool gray color. I'll show you what we're working with here. No, how well you can see that bench is a mess, but this thing is spiral wrapped. We had that that's straight on top right here. Let me get you better situated here. So this, so this guide, first guide right there, is straight on top. Second guide is just barely off 90, barely off 180. And then by the fourth guide, we are back at 180 under on the bottom side of the spine or on the side of the spine. But that's what it's looking like so far. And then what we're actually gonna do, so you see, we have it wrapped in gray, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over these with black. And what the black is gonna do is we're gonna start the black kind of on the inside and on the insides of each of the outer edge. And it's actually gonna give it kind of like a false look of trim tabs on this and it'll be double wrap on the guides. So might add a little bit of weight, but it will look good. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go back through and we're gonna wrap the black. I'm not gonna film that just cause it's a lot of tedious stuff, but we're gonna wrap the black around here and then uh, we'll see what she looks like. I'll do a little overview once the black is on. All right, so I lied. We're actually gonna do a coat of epoxy real quick on this gray and then we're gonna come over it with black again. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get some epoxy mixed up and then uh, this thing is spinning like crazy and we're gonna go ahead and apply that epoxy on there. This is day like three or four working on this rod just to wrap himself. Uh, that gray kind of, I like the gray. I love the gray. Uh, but we're actually gonna over wrap it in black. Now it's gonna add a little bit of weight probably. I'm not too worried about it. The, the whole application of this rod, it's heavy. So you're gonna be throwing heavy lures. Uh, it's gonna be a rod that regardless of how much it weighs, you're gonna get physically tired from using this rod a lot on the jetty, which there's no really, whenever you're throwing three ounce spoons and stuff like that, there's no really good way for a trade off. Cause I mean, a, a light rod, yeah. Even if the rod is light, you're still gonna make hundreds of casts out there on that jetty and you're still gonna get tired working it. That's one thing I tell guys whenever I take them out there for their first time kind of thing or the first time throwing those big spoons and stuff. I'm like, hey, you know, you can take a break cause it is exhausting. I don't even, I'm so fair weather, if they're not biting, fish aren't biting, I'm not gonna actively search for fish a lot of times. I'll let some guys catch some fish before I really start fishing that way. I know they're around, but anyways, what we're doing, let's tell you what we did. We over wrapped the black to make it look like these, once we put epoxy on these, on this right, on this black, what it's gonna do is it's actually gonna make it look like that those gray are just gonna be trim bands. And what I'm hoping is, is when you look at it, it looks like just those gray trim bands are gonna be holding on the rod, the rod eyes themselves, the guides. So we're actually gonna do that all the way up this rod and then we're gonna do a coat of epoxy. Not gonna do anything just because it's just wrapping. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get those down. And then once we get some epoxy on them, I'll do a close up so you can see what I mean. Uh, just because black is gonna be the most forgiving color as a rod builder. Uh, black co covers up any mistakes doing this black on top of the gray what's going to happen is, is when you look at that rod you're going to see those gray rings i think it's going to be a very like very small detail that's going to make this rod look good so anyways we're going to get this black wrapped we already got four four uh guides done and we're going to finish the rest the other four and uh probably get the tip top on and do that and then uh this will probably be the end of the video once we get this wrapped and get these guides uh, epoxied on this is day like four or five. I don't know what I said on the other videos, but we are done with the rod guides. Uh, what I'll do is I'll do a close up here. We did the gray under wrap, or essentially it was gonna be just, the wrap was gonna be gray. I didn't like it. The reason I like the black is whenever you're doing a black blank, uh, it makes it look really streamlined as in like, almost it makes it looks like the guides are like built into the blank itself. 
So really like that look, it's streamlined, it looks good. Um, we stopped our black wrap just short of the gray to almost essentially give it trim bands um, on the inside, like right where the guide foots meet the blank. And I think it looks really good. It's gonna look really good when it's done. Uh, we'll do a wrap for part three of this video coming up next, but this is gonna end it. Every single guide is gonna have those. Like I said, it's like a, gonna, gives a look of like a false trim band on there. So it looks really good. I'm happy where we are at with the rod so far. So next video, we're gonna do all our decorative stuff. And after that, it's gonna be a wrap. So thank y'all for watching. I'll catch y'all on part three.